These are times NFL players showed zero sportsmanship. Oh, that taunting action right there. As he shoots the moon to the fans. He keeps calling everybody little ass boy. And for flicks as hard as Darren Baines, because he made a huge hit and didn't let his helmet stop him from shining. The big hit there. Wow, don't take your helmet off, that's Darren Bates. Pro should have signed with the NBA if he wanted to show off like that. But Cam Newton really stunted on his opponents. See, Superman was dominating the Titans and celebrated so hard he spazzed out. I'm gonna reach over and it is a touchdown. So yeah, there's no such thing as going overboard for Cam. Jalen Ramsey lives to show no mercy. Just like when Andrew Luck thought Jalen was helping him up and had him looking silly. Ramsey, yeah, he goes to like help him up, give him a psych. Nope, don't think so. If that were me, that would be instant beef. Just like Richard Seymour, because he was ready to throw hands. See, Ben Roethlisberger was running his mouth and had it shut for him. And there's the pop from Seymour. And that will get Seymour ejected from the game. Hey, the more you f around, the more you find out. And James Harrison was out for pure destruction. See, he had just made a pass and thought he was safe. Until James Harrison lost control. Now he throws at the last second and completed it as he got planted. And he's down, and there's flags down as well. Yeah, I think we're going to get a hit on an unprotected quarterback. Yeah. Be avoiding James's side of the field for the rest of my career. However, that was just the beginning, because Randy Moss's celebration had the nation disgusted. See, he got a bomb in the playoffs respected in NFL history, but Max Crosby never stops being a hater, because Gardner Minshew didn't say a word, but Mad Max still put him in his place. Little last boy. Little last boy. Max Crosby is so damn angry. He keeps calling everybody little ass boy. Hey, little ass boy. And all Minshew could do was sit his ass down and get punked. You know Max is not to be messed with. But you really know it's serious when even the coach wanted action. Pay attention to how close this game-winning kick was to missing. Oh, baby! Oh, just good! And the Patriots are saying no! And that had Bill Belichick furious with the refs call to decide the game. So this dude went straight after them. Oh, boy. Well, that's a few bucks. And that bad sportsmanship got Bill a 50K fine. But I guess there's no stopping a coach from keeping his cool. So the 49ers won a big game, and Jim Harbaugh was so pumped, he couldn't show the Lions coach some basic respect. The Niners were running off the field. Watch what happens next. There's a quick handshake between Harbaugh and Jim Schwartz. But Jim Schwartz couldn't let that slide and rallied an army. Jim Schwartz, you can see in the white top and the gray pants there, yelling and screaming back at Harbaugh's direction. Harbaugh's in the middle of that somewhere. You're going to see some people putting their helmets back on their heads as if a fight is going to break out. Damn, that got hot. That sounds like a situation for Richard Sherman. And Sherman had even more to say. So when Seattle wrapped up the game, he waved the fans home. Dude was getting so disrespectful. Damn. Richard was tough on the field, but he got caught lacking. Like Aaron Donald, who was out for violence. See, things got chippy when the Rams were getting blown out. And Donald was not having it. So his solution was going full UFC. Foolish. Foolish. What is he doing? Are you taking by the neck? Bro had a dude in a chokehold, but Donald was still enraged. And because he was kicked out of the game, he decided to let the world know how he really felt about it. Aaron Donald ejected, and there's your night for the Rams. Dude acted surprised for getting out for attempted strangulation. But the beat between DeAndre Hopkins and D'Angelo Hall was unbelievable. See, the Texans were practicing with the Redskins during training camp. And when D'Angelo Hall got all in D-Hop's face, he let him know he wasn't scared. Just keep that shit to me. Man, don't touch me. What? What's up wrong with you, bro? Grown ass man, dog. Just like you. Well, we can box. I feel guy, homie. I feel guy. I feel guy, boy. I feel guy, boy. I feel guy, boy. I'm just like you now. I'm gonna slap the fuck out of you too. And Hopkins didn't play that. So when they lined up on the next play, Diop not only snatched Hall's ankles, he snatched his soul. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Somebody hurt. He left him on the ground like roadkill. D-Hop is different. But George Kittle had an entire city out for him. See, George Kittle took his beef with the Cowboys way too personal. But he couldn't do it without looking into the history books that Gary Plummer, who wore this insane t-shirt against the Cowboys. The 49ers had the Cowboys on their calendar last season, and Kittle wanted to imitate history. But he had to go hard if he wanted to expose what he had going on. So this dude went off. Two, Bernie got a butt. It's own hat trick. 
shot. And after Kittle went for three touchdowns, he pissed off an entire fan base. And that had Micah Parsons hot, because he went on his podcast and sounded off. You know, George Kittle had three touchdowns on us, and he posted this thing to IG. Um, and I always have this expression, and we're going to look at this. You know, he said, F Dallas. Yeah. Um, you know, I just feel like he's making it more, way more personal than it had to be. And, you know, Kittle's my guy. But I'm going to say this. Laugh now, cry later. All right. Let's talk about the time Plaxico Burris shot himself in the leg and Steve turned it into a touchdown celebration. Look, Plaxico was clubbing in New York. And while he was out there, he had his gun on him. But it slipped down his pants and he accidentally pulled the trigger. This guy went from Super Bowl hero to surviving jail time. And when Plax finally came back to the New York Jets, Steve Johnson didn't hold back. Pay attention, because in his touchdown dance, he reenacted the entire incident. Touchdown! Stevie! Johnson over in the middle, and he beat Darrell Revis. He continues to go. Wow. Steve didn't give a damn. But the Saints were out to make history with the most diabolical touchdown celebration of all time. See, back in 2003, Joe called it in. Fast forward to 2021, and Michael Thomas decided to take it to the next level because the Saints had the ball in the fourth quarter with a chance to seal the game. So Demarius Thomas made a play and had some personal business. He hit prior to the game. Michael Thomas had his number dialed, and he answered with the game. But T.O.'s touchdown celebration was the ultimate disrespect. Look, he was playing against the Cowboys and decided to make a name for himself. So after he scored a touchdown, this dude sprinted toward the most iconic sports logo in the NFL. Where's he going? Right to the center of the stadium. Finally, when he scored. So it was time for payback. He's going to the center of the field, too. Takes one out of the... But it still wasn't over, because Tio still wanted the smoke and went straight for the Dallas Star again. Down the game. That fine was a love tap compared to the disrespect. And truthfully, Richard Sherman lives for those types of moments, because his beef with Tom Brady put him in the meme hall of fame. See, Tom Brady was talking crazy during the game, saying stuff to Sherman and the Legion of Boom like, come and see me after the game. But that's when the Seahawks made a comeback for the ages, and Sherman went straight for Brady. However, nobody really understood what he said until he hopped on Twitter and became a meme god. My man has something to hold over Brady's head forever, but this next one should have been watching his feet because the Dolphins were playing the Jets when a coach almost ended a player's career. He is on the Jets' sideline. Well, it looked like he got tripped by one of the uh, members of the Jets' staff. Watch the knee here being stuck out on purpose. Dude went from having the best seats in the house to a disgrace. But that wasn't the only time coaches were out for bones. Because Mike Tomlin did something so crazy, he could have ended a player's career. Look, it was a close game between the Ravens and Steelers. And Jacoby Ford made an unbelievable play. Dude had a clear lane to the end zone. Or so he thought. Because right before he made an escape, Steelers coach Mike Tomlin pulled a dirty move from the sidelines and decided to stick his leg out to save a touchdown. Tomlin is essentially on the the field here did that force Jacoby Jones to lean back into the tackle by Cortez Allen and he's <laughs> niggering my man he's a player now this dude could have busted his knee or broke his arm with that dirty play and so the NFL didn't let him slide with it and hit Tomlin with a $100,000 fine but this next one had the reputation of the most iconic touchdown celebration in the NFL and of course I'm talking about Tyreek Hill who turned the peace sign into his personal trademark and boy did it make defenders furious my man was out here throwing up deuces before even reaching the end zone and he left Anton Winfield fuming when he had two fingers in his face. Hill for the touchdown. But the cheetah was taunting too much, so the NFL had to crack down. See, they banned Tyreek's celebration for good. And fast forward to the next season, the Chiefs and Buccaneers met in Super Bowl 54. And Anton Winfield didn't forget about being humiliated. So when he made a play on Tyreek, he was out for revenge. Throws. Tampa Bay makes another stop. Oh, that taunting, that taunting action right there. It's like about kicking somebody when they're already down. And these next two had generational beef. See, Uncle Shea had been talking nonsense on TV because this dude got popular. And so he decided he had a lot of say when DK made a mistake. It's all over this. Because Shannon went on Twitter and had something to say. However, DK wasn't going to let the slander slide. So he called a 56-year-old man who can lift the truck a little boy. So then Shannon shot back and told DK to check his resume and reminded him he'll never
never meet his greatness. Then DK took to the edge and said he'll wipe his ass with Shannon's lil career. So the Broncos social media team reminded everyone exactly who Shannon Sharp was before he started running his mouth on TV. At the end of the day, DK just thought Shannon was another old man wishing he could relive his glory days. But if I'm being honest, old and young athletes just need to do better. However, it wasn't any different between Earl Thomas and Pete Carroll. Look, Earl was one of the best safeties in the league in 2018, so he sat out most of the preseason to get a long-term contract and secure his future. But his coach Pete Carroll didn't think he was good enough and left him without the bag. And that's when Earl demanded a trade. But Seattle left him out to dry, and after all the drama, he still had to get back on the field. And surely this dude must have known something we didn't, because when the Seattle Seahawks played the Cardinals, his worst nightmare came true. The field and his pass is going to be caught for the touchdown by Chad Williams. And on the other side, a shaken up Earl Thomas. Uh, before he even got to the player. My man broke his leg. Tens of millions of dollars were gone right there. And while he was carted off the field, he had to let Pete Carroll know it was all his fault. And they're going to take him off. So two really, really tough injuries for the Seahawks. Damn. Who broke the first rule of playing a sport? Respecting the coach. But now, we gotta talk about Tom Brady. Cause he hated on a player not just during the time he was playing, but even in retirement. It all started when Tom Brady was let go by the Patriots and was looking for a new team to win them a Super Bowl. And one of the teams on his list was the Miami Dolphins. And in the beginning, Miami did everything they could to sign Brady. But at the last moment, they would let the world know that they had somebody better than the GOAT. And this had Brady furious. So he went around talking crazy. We're interested in all this and they weren't interested at the very end. I was sitting there thinking, you're sticking with that <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Tom probably had no desire to go to that team, but now it's like, why don't you want me? Absolutely. Like, <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. When sure. I look back, I'm like, I just don't <laughs> way would have went to that team. <laughs> but they said they didn't want me, and I know what that means. I know what that feels like, and I'm going like, to you up because of that. Whoa. My man didn't hold back, because you wouldn't believe who Miami chose over him. Are you the that Tom Brady was talking about. I don't think you were the or I think it was Carr. Yeah. That no. seems like recent. No. That's yeah. the most recent. Be me. No. You think it was you? Yeah. I feel like Brady respects you. No, zero respect. Really? Would never shake my hand. Really? Wait. Uh. Of all the people, they picked the dude who played backup most of his career, Ryan Fitzpatrick. And when it was found out, he would let the world know about their history. I mean, I've told this story before, but he just pisses me off because you're in Buffalo, you're playing New England, they're kicking our ass every single year they're beating us and um we finally in 2011 knocked him off it was right at the beginning of the season we had this like great start and he threw five interceptions in the game which was just wonderful to see every single one of them it was like <laughs> wonderful to see and run straight off like no handshake no you know quarterback middle of the field where are the cameras okay yeah, hey, yeah. stay healthy buddy you know pat me on the head and let me go like yeah. just ran straight off so it just it bothered me so much because there was no respect there. Damn, Brady never even looked at his direction. However, the Patriots will go past any limit to win. Cause we gotta talk about when the Patriots were caught cheating, which led to one of the biggest controversies in NFL history, Spygate. See, the Patriots were crossing league rules for years by stealing hand signals from defensive coordinators like they were shooting a documentary. It was so bad that when Eric Mangini, a former Pats assistant, moved to the Jets, he straight up snitched to the NFL. But the NFL still needed evidence. So before the Jets played against the Patriots, Security had an extra eye out for the spy. And before you know it, they found a staffer videotaping on the sidelines. But Bill Belichick was looking around like, what's the problem? Because he didn't know you can't steal hand signals with video evidence. And then the hammer came down with a 500,000 fine for Belichick, and the Patriots lost a first round draft pick. According to the ESPN investigation, the Patriots spied on opposing teams in at least 40 games from 2000 to 2007 videotaping the signals of opposing coaches to gain an on-field advantage. That was unbelievable. We still have to talk about the most insane moment of players showing zero sportsmanship, because the Patriots had even more to unveil, and it was all because of Tom Brady. Just when he thought the Patriots were done bending the rules, they had the deflate gate. See, it was 2015, the AFC Championships, and the Pats were destroying the Colts. But after the game, rumors started flying around about the footballs. Now, the Colts figured out the Patriots were using under 
inflated balls, making it easier to grip and throw in cold weather. And who likes their footballs a little squishy? None other than Tom Brady. So when the NFL launched an investigation, they found out that 11 out of the 12 Patriot footballs were underinflated. And on top of that, text messages between Patriot staffers made it sound like deflating the balls was just part of the daily routine. Brady ended up with a four-game suspension, and the Pats were fined $1 million and lost another first-round pick. Tom tried to fight it, but in the end, he sat those games out. But he still came back that season and took the Patriots to another Super Bowl win. Man, Brady is just a different breed. However, he's not the only one. Because imagine losing so much control, you do things that'll hurt your legacy forever. And if you want to see all about that and much more, then you need to check out this video on screen.